Okay, I know the video thumbnail looked like a different, more aggressive van, but don't worry, we'll get to that in a bit. If you're like me and never find yourself sitting either behind or underneath your desk thinking, man, I wish I lived in a van, then the prospect of overlanding has probably crossed your mind. Try searching locally for a good adventure vehicle though, and the results are likely pretty grim. You could find yourself a high mileage synchro that has already had about five lifetimes worth of camping and off-roading under its belt, but priced the same as a decent cottage with waterfront, or you may wind up looking at a land yacht that gets about three miles to the gallon, too big to legally park in your driveway, and was previously used for nefarious purposes. I propose you hire me to get out from underneath my desk, help you cast your search a little further afield to find and import a perfectly clean canvas to start your ideal overland build. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a 1996 L300 Delica Starwagon P25W chassis limited edition model that I imported for a client who will be doing some vanning and overlanding. This Delica is in great condition, very well maintained, and aside for some audio upgrades over the years, has remained completely stock in factory floor condition for 21 years. The P25W GLX limited edition chassis has a 4D56T engine. Being a 1996 means it was in its second to last facelift and mechanical iteration from Mitsubishi, meaning that mechanically it's about as bulletproof an L300 as you can buy. The 4D56 turbo engine is an interference job, making 85 horsepower at 4200 RPM and 144 foot-pounds of torque at 2000 RPM, with a mechanically driven diesel injection pump. There is no intercooler, and charged air can get pretty hot which is why I'll sometimes install a pyro gauge on these engines. The turbo cooling is re-engineered from early 1990s models to allow for oil and water cooling, as opposed to the early 1993 and older models whose turbos are just oil cooled. This particular Delica came with a single battery, but it is the same battery compartment as any other Delica L300 and could easily house a second battery in parallel. As with most L300s, this van is equipped with auto free hubs, which engage the front axles at the hubs in four high mode. These can be easily swapped out for manual locking hubs. While Mitsubishi was prepared to offer buyers a cornucopia of factory options on the star wagons from the AC rigged ice box and hot box to karaoke for the passengers, the limited edition is a stripped down and simplified van weighing 200 kilograms less than those super exceed delicas that are so popular in grey markets. That 200 kilogram weight loss in a van with 85 horsepower is something that was immediately noticeable while I was driving this van. In situations like cornering, braking, and accelerating, situations that tend to come up a lot when you're driving, the stripped down P25 limited edition is noticeably more agile and light footed. It didn't wallow so much on corners, wasn't so sluggish in stop and go traffic, and handled itself quite well, all delicas considered. Over the past few months, I've imported several of the heavier P35 Super Exceed Crystallite roof and high roof models with all the features, so I've been driving a good range of Delicas recently, and this one was one of the nicest to drive. The L300 Delicas cult status as a vehicle that still inspires love, hate, respect for the design and aesthetics is something that was predicted by Mitsubishi early on in the van's production run. <laughs> Inside, the limited edition is utilitarian. This is the eight passenger bench seat layout. In front, you have GLX level vinyl door skins and trim, rugged but basic seat upholstery, thin carpets and floor mats, and standard option power windows and AC. The middle row is a bench seat. The eight passenger Delicas are not without some seating configuration tricks though. Flip the middle row's jump seat out of the way, and the backrest on the other two seats flips between forward and rear facing positions. There are additional lap belts for the rear facing position. The rear bench folds forward and out of the way for storage space. Now this van was just bought in Japan. It was very well maintained and had service history including a recent timing belt job. The body is completely unmolested and underneath is pristine. This is important because the client wanted some work done with the ride height. I commissioned a local business called Respeed to make extended shackles so I could drop the rear leaf springs, which I installed giving it this nose dive look with the rear end sitting two inches higher than before. Then I cranked the front torsion bars all the way out to raise the front by two inches. The end result was a van sitting fully two inches higher and allowing for 31 inch by 10.5 inch AT tires to be fit. 
Over the next couple of months, the new owner is going to figure out slide-outs for storage and camping equipment, as well as making the interior livable. Check out his Instagram feed at Northern Days, and I'll post the link in the video description. So when considering a blank canvas Delica for overlanding, there are a lot of different trim levels in the Delicas, just as competent, and in some cases even nicer to drive than the full high trim level Super Exceed models. If you think a Delica might suit your overlanding needs, I need to warn you, they cruise about as fast as they look like they might, which is slightly faster than a VW Westie. They prefer the slow lane or a scenic route to slaloming through traffic on a busy highway. Part of the overlanding motivation is to plan a route, get off the beaten track and explore some new territory. Maybe give your Delica a name and anthropomorphize it a little. Enjoy each other's company. And appreciate the journey. <laughs>